Welcome to the Bliss Podcast. I am your host, Maitreya Rishidasa, joining you East London. Thank you for clicking on this video, or maybe you're watching it somehow on some other platform illegally. I don't know how you got access to this to the, the audio version of this podcast without it being on YouTube, because we don't put it anywhere else. Please tell us if we are being posted somewhere. Actually, that would be quite nice. I wouldn't mind at all if someone took this and ripped it and put it on available for audio. Uh, that would be very kind of that person. So I congratulate in the future if anyone takes initiative to rip our videos off YouTube and put them onto a pure audio platform. We were doing that for a little while because uh, we were using this Buzzsprout. Uh, but it wasn't so much worth it for the price of Buzzsprout, so we stopped that endeavor. Uh, let us know if there's a free uh, platform. We can put this on audio. <clears throat> now, actually, we use a lot of um, video on the podcast, so maybe it won't be so uh, necessary anymore. But anyway, let me know if you have some ideas. You can also put comments in the comment section. Uh, if you like, you can let me know what you like about the podcast and ideas for the podcast. Maybe you have some challenges or some questions or something that you'd like to voice your opinion about. So don't be shy. The comment section is there for a reason and, uh, we check it regularly. So please go ahead. Feel free to use that nice facility that Mr. Phil from YouTube has provided for all of our pleasures. So yes, now let us get into the podcast. Um, we're going to take a little break from criticizing Kepler's and cobblers and scientists of all different kinds of uh, demeanors. Um, we're going to now talk about something a bit more devotional in this uh, podcast. And I thought I'd bring it to a rather essential topic, which is the chanting of the Maha Mantra. Um, now, we have many podcasts on chanting Hare Krishna. <coughs> But uh, this particular podcast is focusing on the chanting of 16 rounds. So 16 rounds, the number 16 has a significance for the followers of Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. This, uh, uh, well, first of all, let's get into a, what is a round because most people have no idea what a round is. Um, a round is a short way of saying a round. So, uh, well, I don't have a camera here. I was actually, before I was trying to start this podcast, I was trying to do this with a, uh, I was trying to set up a new thing, a new dynamic for the Bliss podcast. I was trying to bring in a webcam so you would be able to see my face, which I know for most people is not a great benediction, but anyway, it would be useful for this particular part where I would show you, um, a Japa Mala. Uh, chanting beads, and you could see how to do this more practically. But uh, anyway, let's let's utilize what we have and uh, look up Japamala on the internet on Mr. Google, our guru Google. Very nice um, guru here, Guru G. Google. Google. <coughs> so Mr. Google Google G is uh, so you can see Google G. Hopefully there's not a copyright image. I'm not going to get sued by the Buddhists. Just kidding. This is Tulsi Mala. So, um, so there are different kinds of Tulsi. Sorry, there are different kind of uh, Japa Malas. You can see here. This is a uh, Rudraksha. We don't use Rudraksha. This is used by Shivites, and there are also similarly these kind of uh, um, how do you say emerald and lapis lazuli. So this is. Uh, used by Buddhists, this is this kind of style. And um, But we use this, this is very nice, this is Tulsi, this is a very auspicious kind of, um, you could say, wood. It's a, it's a spiritual wood. Actually, it's a pure devotee, Tulsi Devi, but that's kind of a complex science, maybe we'll get into that in another podcast. 
So, but for practical uh, purposes, we can say this is made of a very auspicious kind of plant. And you can count, I, maybe it would just save you time to take my word for it, there are 108 beads on this Jaffa Mala. If you like, you can verify me. I don't know why you would do that and waste so much time, but you can pause the video and count how many there are. So 108 beads. And then you also have a, a big bead with a cool hairdo here. That's the Krishna bead. Okay, so um, now how this works, maybe. I mean, it looks kind of intuitive also. Uh, but basically, you grab one bead here with your thumb and your middle finger. Don't touch it with your index finger. In index finger, very bad. Okay. <laughs> Actually, if you, if you grab the mala... Uh, anyway, and somehow chance, somehow or other, that is very good. Actually, I don't, I don't want to discourage you. But if you want to be pukka, um, if you want to be perfect, do it very nicely. Don't grab it uh, with your index finger. Now, do what with it? You're just going to grab it. You're just going to hold it there with your fingers and do nothing. No. Um, actually, look, this lady. There's a picture here. Don't grab the Buddhist one. Grab a. I have this one actually in green. Not a Buddhist, but anyway, just. Use this Japamala and put it into this picture. You can see she's grabbing it with the middle finger and the thumb here very nicely, holding the finger out. So, now what is the use of knowing how to hold it if you don't know what to do with the thing? So, um, we chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Very nicely, this is uh, this mantra, I'm, I have a nice picture here. Um, this mantra consists of uh, 16 syllables, three words, Hare, Krishna, and Rama. This is kind of a cool picture. Help you visualize. Hare, Krishna, and Rama. And it's, and it's uh, organized into a particular order. Hare, Krishna, Hare, Krishna, 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 Hare, Hare. Hari Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari. These uh, this particular order is very significant. Um, it's not exactly a normal vibration. It's not just a normal collection of words. This mantra. The word mantra means uh, by man in Sanskrit. The word man means the mind, and trayate means to free or to deliver. So it's not an ordinary collection of sounds. This is actually a, a ticket out of the clutches of the mind. Um, if you focus on this vibration, it is a transcendental sound vibration, and uh, it liberates you from the influence of the mind. <clears throat> so uh, and and the, also the influence of the senses and the the very attachment to the material body as a whole, which includes not only your gross form, but um, your subtle form also, your mind, intelligence, and false ego. And eventually, believe it or not, it awakens you to your original spiritual nature. So, um, you might think this is, how is this all possible just by chanting these three simple names? It seems a little too far-fetched, kind of like a fairy tale. Well, I, I can tell you... Um, that first of all, try it. That's the, uh, <laughs> the first of all, you must try it before you bash it. Try it, right? There are so many things that you're already trying, right? You might be putting LSD in your mouth, you might be putting so many kinds of things alcohol, uh, so many foodstuffs you're trusting, or you go to McDonald's and you put some rubbish GMOs there. I don't know, I don't want to judge you. Maybe you're not, maybe you're a nice, healthy person, but uh, in general, people are trusting putting all kinds of things in their mouth. So why not put the Hare Krishna mantra in your mouth? Just try it. And then you can judge. Right? So it, first of all, do a, do a little chanting, and then you can speculate whether or not it's, uh, it's a real thing. Because, um, now it's not that immediately by chanting you're going to, you know, realize God. It's not so cheap thing. But uh, you can get a transcendental taste immediately just from chanting this mantra. That is the meaning of uh, transcendental sound vibration. It acts on a on the platform of the soul. It awakens the soul. So it's impossible not to feel um, uh, some uh, 
um, transcendental pleasure by chanting this mantra. Actually, we see this practically because um, not only can you chant this mantra to yourself, but you can also chant it to others. You can uh, chant with musical instruments, accompanying it very... Uh, accompany, oh, how do you say that word? I speak the English language. I've spoken the English language all my life, and I can't say the word accompany. How do you, <laughs> I can't, you can accompany... Thank you. Tongue. You can accompany this... <laughs> Thank you, Krishna, for controlling my tongue nicely, so I could say nicely. It, uh, you can accompany this sound vibration with musical instruments. Uh, this is a particularly... Um, uh, um, nice and staple, uh, how do you say, trademark, it's a trademark of the Hare Krishna movement. Uh, what's a good video I can look up to show, to demonstrate people like cartels, mudanga, nice, kietan? I'm just going to look at Vishnu Jana Swami, that's the classic, we always go to go to Vishnu Jana Swami. Vishnu Jana Swami, kietana. Mm, there should be some nice Guaranteed, 100% bona fides, or your money back. You can see some nice Vishnu John Kirtana. So what you're going to see here is you're going to see um, people using two instruments primarily. Uh, one is a cartels, a pair of cartels, that's a hand symbol made of brass. There's kind of two circular wonderful golden chakras, discs. And uh, then also this wonderful looking drum which is thin, in one, thin on one side and um, thick on the other. That's called a mridanga. So um, you can uh, see these two instruments being used um, by the devotees in this video. So just play a little portion so you can uh, see them in action. Looks ecstatic, right? So, this is a, a wonderful um, method. Uh, how to um, broadcast this transcendental sound vibration? Because you can also, you can of course get some pleasure from chanting Hare Krishna, but it's even nicer if you can um, amplify that chanting and give other people um, this transcendental pleasure. And uh, it sounds very, very nice when accompanied by this, uh, these medanga and kartals. And um, this was the method uh, actually in, um, given to us by uh, Lord Chaitanya himself. Lord Chaitanya is an incarnation of the Supreme Lord, uh, Sri Krishna. Actually, he is the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. It's also another complicated kind of subject matter, but... Um, uh, yes, this is this is uh, Krishna himself. He descended as a f in the form of his own devotee, and he gave this uh, movement of chanting the holy names of Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hari Hari. So here you can see this, of course, is not exactly a Nix Nikon um, iPhone captured on iPhone picture of 500 years ago in West Bengal. Uh, but it's a nice rendition, a nice painting, where you can see devotees are using these same instruments, Mirananga, cartels, there's a trumpet here, 
I don't exactly know if that's uh, bona fide, but um, yeah, this is these are the, all the instruments that uh, Lord Chaitanya himself was using. So these instruments and this chanting is a process of um, becoming freed from the body and realizing the self, and most importantly, reviving one's original love for God, pure love, pure consciousness, which is love of God. Um, uh, he gave this um, process himself. God himself gave a process for realizing God. So it couldn't be a more uh, bona fide um, process. This is a very nice picture. Hold on. I want to load this up in HD so you can see here. Yeah, very nice. Medanga, cartels, simple. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, uh, yeah, there are these two methods. Um chanting on the beads and chanting with the instruments and what is that chanting Hare Krishna chanting so I just realized that I opened the door and didn't close it yeah if you want to chant on the beads um, you grab one of these beads and you chant Hare Krishna Hare Krishna like that on the whole mantra on one bead then when you finish you chant to the other bead and then this bead and this bead and, and all the way around and hence the name round right so this is one Around 108 uh, mantras chanted on the beads. And you don't chant rounds, by the way, when you do kirtan. That would look... <laughs> I don't know if anyone's going to try that in the future. Don't try and do that. Don't try and chant a round of kirtan. Um, that's not how it works. Um, of course, there's no harm. You can also go and chant um, somehow or other. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we chant on the beads. And, um, uh, uh, yes. So this chanting, this chanting of uh, Hare Krishna, as I mentioned before, this transcendental sound vibration, um, it can be, uh, anyone can chant. That's, that's the first thing. It's not that uh, uh, you have to have a, um, you have to wear Hare Krishna clothes or, shave your head or wear some face marking or um, you don't even have to accept Krishna as God but you can try chanting at first there is no harm um, to try it at all and just see the effect uh, there's no qualification no education required but uh, simply to hear chant and hear not just chanting uh, but also hearing the vibration. And uh, by this process, uh, all these things, transcendental knowledge, realization of your own self, freedom from all material miseries, is actually uh, possible. And this process, as I mentioned before, it's given by Lord Chaitanya himself, um, Krishna himself. And it's not that Krishna just came by himself and started chanting. Um, this is... Uh, being passed down by many great saintly persons, um, not only since 500 years ago when um, Lord Chaitanya appeared, but uh, uh, also for many thousands of years, um, this Mahamantra has been chanted. This is one of the such personalities, Haridas Thakur. Haridas Thakur was a disciple of Lord Chaitanya, and um, uh, here he is chanting. He actually, Lord uh, Haridas Thakur, was chanting uh, a huge amount of rounds per day, uh, something like 170 plus. So that is not recommended. <laughs> it's also not possible uh, for most people to be able to chant such a large amount of rounds. Haridas Thakur was a very saintly, pure soul. Um, but it goes to show this, the wonderful um, nectar of chanting the holy name. It can become it can get to such a stage that all one wants to do is chant Hare Krishna. He doesn't even want to eat or sleep. Nothing. He simply wants to chant. That is that is a taste for the Hare Krishna mantra. And that is possible if we follow the correct process. Not that immediately we can jump to this particular stage of devotional um, service, devotional love of God. It requires a process called Vaidhi Bhakti um, or devotional service according to regulative principles so anyone can chant there's no restriction 
But if you want to lock in the pleasure of chanting, if you want to reach the highest stage of perfection, then、um, you have to follow、uh, some principles. And these principles they keep the mind clean, they keep the body clean,、um, they keep the um, um, the state of consciousness in a in a placid state of consciousness called the mode of goodness. There are different modes of material nature. So、uh, let us just、uh, hold on. I'll show you here. This is a nice little application on the computer called Veda Base. It gives you access to all of Shiva Prabhupada's wonderful Vedic literatures, and you can access everything.、Um, huge amounts of knowledge are stored here. So we'll go here to the Bhagavad Gita, <clears throat> and、um, yeah, so. Uh, Shri Krishna is um, uh, um, uh, discussing in the Bhagavad Gita various、um, topics of knowledge, and uh, uh, one of those topics of knowledge is the different modes of material nature. So、um, uh, let us just read this particular shloka and see if we can understand. What the mode of goodness is, or shuddha sattva, tatra sattva nimalavat nimalavat prakashakam anamayam sukha sangena badhanati gyana sangena chanaka. A sinless one, the mode of goodness, being purer than others, is illuminating, and it frees one from all sinful reactions. Those situated in that mode become conditioned by a sense of happiness and knowledge. Okay, purport by Shri Prabhupada. The living entities conditioned by material nature are, ver- are of various types. One is happy, another is very active, and another is helpless. All these types of、uh, psychological manifestations are causes of the entities' conditioned status in nature. How they are differently conditioned is explained in this section of Bhagavad Gita. The mode of goodness is first considered. The effect of developing the mode of goodness in the material world is that one becomes wiser. Than those otherwise conditioned, a man in the mode of goodness is not so much affected by material miseries, and he has a sense of advancement in material knowledge. The representative type is the brahmana, who is supposed to be situated in the mode of goodness. This sense of happiness is due to understanding that, in the mode of goodness, one is more or less free from sinful reactions. Actually, in the Vedic literature, it is said that in the mode of goodness means sorry that the mode of goodness means greater knowledge and a greater sense of happiness. Okay, <clears throat> so not exactly what I wanted to uh, actually uh, uh,、um, discuss here, but we can go, we can work with this. So,、um, yes, the, one becomes more or less free from sinful reactions. So, uh, uh, why these regulative principles、um, are required? What are those regulative principles? First of all.、Um, For those who want to take the process of Krishna consciousness or of self-realization seriously, we we um, uh, um, prohibit four things: illicit sex, meat eating, gambling, and、uh, what is that one? Illicit sex, meat eating, gambling, and uh, uh, intoxication. So these four sinful activities. It's not a sentiment exactly, or it's not fanaticism. These four principles are the root causes of the、um, distraction of the mind. If you indulge in these four things, you have no time to engage in self-realization, and the mind is always disturbed. Just consider, you know, how can you meditate if you're intoxicated, right? If you're high or drunk, this is impossible. And similarly, if you're disturbed by sex desire or you're always, in- always engaging in sex life, then you have no time. And no attention span to focus on meditation, right? So similarly, you can go like this. So we follow these four things,、uh, four、uh, regulative principles, so that the chanting process becomes very fixed up and very focused. And also because these are sinful activities, these activities incur karma.、Um, everything that you do incurs some kind of karma. This is、uh, logical. You can see it also.、Uh, just like if you overeat foods, immediately you get indigestion. Unfortunately, this happens to me 
more often than it should. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, maybe you have the experience. If you overeat something, immediately the stomach becomes um, filled too much. And then there's a reflux of acids. So this is an immediate reaction to overeating. And um, um, in one sense, you can uh, you can apply this to karma. What goes around comes around, right? If you if you do something, um, you get a reaction. If you eat a certain type of food stuff, you develop a certain type of body. If you talk in a certain way or act in a certain way, that will affect your state of consciousness. And um, just like in the government, if you if you commit some crime, you become punished or rewarded by the government. Similarly, in the material world, depending on the kind of action that you do, you get a pious uh, reward or a um, sinful punishment. So <clears throat> uh, now, actually, even piety is considered a, like a sinful reaction because it binds you to the material body. You have to experience that karma with the material body. In the mode of goodness, however, um, you become free from at least the uh, negative sinful reactions in the sense uh, um, uh, that you can begin to purify yourself from karma. So by situating yourself on this platform, by following these regulative principles of freedom, as Srila Prabhupada writes, it's the beginning of your freedom is to actually restrict your freedom. Um, uh, then the chanting becomes very um, potent. So um, now the other regulative principle is to chant a minimum amount of rounds. Because by chanting a fixed amount of rounds every day, um, you get in a habit and you develop a taste for chanting. <clears throat> So uh, now we're going to read some quotes from Srila Prabhupada uh, and analyze what Srila Prabhupada says on the topic of chanting 16 rounds. So um, let us start beginning. Now, just keep in mind that uh, this is a regulation for those who want to take the process of Krishna consciousness very seriously, and it is especially intended for those who are already initiated or want to get initiated into um, um, Krishna consciousness. Not, <laughs> of course, initiation into Krishna consciousness actually depends on your taking up the process, hearing from Srila Prabhupada, but we're talking about formally initiated into some kind of organization. Um, the prospective disciple must be observed for six months and he must chant 16 rounds for those six months and follow the four regulative principles associated with devotees and some other things, but uh, uh, principally the four regulative principles and chanting 16 rounds. So um, that's this is applying to those who want to be serious and want to get initiated, but there are many other things that for those who are not so, um, uh, have, haven't got that ideal just yet, um, there are many things to be learned from all these quotes. So uh, let us... Have a look. Srila Prabhupada here says, So far as your question about arranging time, our first business is to regularly complete our chanting of 16 rounds each day. Okay, so <clears throat> that's a letter to Kirtan Ananda. Um, sometimes that we have a um, difficulty arranging time. Time is a very precious thing and also very limited. Um... And sometimes it's very difficult to um, arrange your day in such a way that you have time to chant your 16 rounds. There are so many duties um, of which eating and sleeping take up a gigantic portion of the day. And for those of you who are working, you know that after working, eating and sleeping, there's practically no time at all to do anything. So um, what helps is to wake up early in the morning. If you wake up early uh, before sunrise, uh, generally speaking, that is before 4 a.m., for people who want to get initiated and take it seriously, it is required that they wake up before 4 a.m. And if you do like that, you have a good chunk of time in the morning to chant your 16 rounds. Also, this time in the morning is called the Brahma Mahurta. This particular time is very auspicious um, the, the mind is in a very placid state. Like I said before, the mind is actually in the mode of goodness. Um, 
so uh, it's more conducive to meditation uh, so early in the morning. You can experience this if you wake up uh, very early. Um, <laughs> you can even say that because it's dark, that you don't have so many things to be distracted by on the, in the outside world. Also, people are not up at that time, generally speaking, unless at some point that Hare Krishna movement expl explodes and everyone's up at 4 a.m. chanting their morning rounds. But generally speaking, people are not up. So there's not so many distractions. There's not noise like here in London where there's cars driving around and, and making huge revving sounds. Um, you know, there's just some birds and, and whatnot. It's a very peaceful, very peaceful atmosphere. And also, you haven't had many things happen in the day, so the mind is not so active, not thinking about so many things, and um, it's pacified, just got out of the sleeping state. So, um, if you arrange this early morning time to chant, generally, you can manage to chant your rounds each day. Um, yeah, there's also sometimes a difficulty that we think that other duties are more important or we become overwhelmed by uh, duties. But here Srila Prabhupada says, our first business is to regularly complete our 16 rounds. This is the most important thing about our sadhana. The, the uh, chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra is the backbone. You could say it's the backbone of your devotional life. Even not devotional life, practically speaking, your life. If you want to be, if you want to come to the platform of real human life, human form of life, um, the chanting of the Maha Mantra is the principle, it is the backbone. Because this is what helps you remember Krishna. This sets you up for the whole day to remember Krishna. And um, uh, why I should remember Krishna? Someone might challenge, why? what is the use of... Um, uh, remembering Krishna. So, uh, hmm. now I'm, I'm embarrassing myself by not knowing the shloka here. So someone might challenge like that and um, uh, we have an answer for this. So, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 8.6 Yam Yam Vapi Smaram Pavam Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his present body, in his next life he will attain to that state without fail. Um, so we're meditating on so many things in our life throughout the day, depending on our activities. Some people are meditating on very nice foodstuffs, and some med people are meditating on sex life, and some people are meditating on, if they're very elevated, some people are meditating on some how to perform some pious activities or something. So depending on these activities, we're developing a certain body, actually, by the thoughts that we generate in this life. Actually, it's stated um, by modern, I mean, by people who have had near-death experiences. And I, I guess it's just one of those things that's like common knowledge at this point. Common, uh, or how do you say, like an old wives' tale or something that's just generally known that. Uh, people say they see their whole life flash before their eyes at death. This is like a, a thing. So um, um, when they have a near-death near experience, they see you know their whole life play out. And they have a lot of people, they change their whole life. They try to do good, take up to spirituality, become religious, so on and so forth. Because they realize actually their whole life was a nonsense. And they did so many rubbish things and they wasted time. So generally, when people have a near-death experience, oftentimes they rehash their whole um, idea, their whole plan. Um, but that actually, it is the fact, actually, that your um, thoughts generated throughout the life um, will create a general picture um, uh, at the time of death. And depending on that general picture, you get a body according to uh, the desire Right, because your thoughts are based on your desires. Uh, if you have a desire to gratify your tongue, you're going to be thinking about food all the time. And um, if you ate whatever you liked in order to satisfy your tongue, there's a very nice arrangement in the material nature um, that you will get a body according to the particular thoughts that you generated. It's a very scientific philosophy. Um, uh, you will generate a body in the in the next life according to your thoughts. 
And that is, that's the mercy of uh, Krishna, actually, that we're able to um, get a body that we like to have, that we wanted to generate. This whole life is like a, a training ground for the next life. Um, because we're not the body, right? The, the soul is just going through various forms of body. <clears throat> actually, we had a body at one point of a small child, and now we have the body of uh, maybe a young man or a young woman, or maybe there's even some elderly people watching or listening to the podcast. That would be nice. But um, somehow or other, we're changing the body, but we are not changed. We're still here. So that means we're, we are something different from the body. We are actually consciousness, and we're just observing these changes, and we're being placed in these different bodies, and at the time of death also, we'll switch to another body. So how that body is arranged was explained in the previous verse. If you chant 16 rounds, and you remember Krishna, you focus your mind on Krishna, then the chance that you will remember Krishna instead of something material at the time of death is very much increased. And if you remember Krishna... Yes, who is Krishna? Let's have a picture of Krishna here because Krishna is so nice. Mm -hmm. Not this guy. This guy's not Krishna. <laughs> what is this? Rubbish. This guy, look how he thinks he's Krishna. Nonsense. Anyway, this is the Krishna I was referring to. This beautiful personality. If you remember Krishna at the time of death, no, you don't become Krishna. No, you don't become this guy. You become uh, a spiritual entity. Do you have a body like Krishna's? Sakchirananda. Eternal, blissful, and full of knowledge. That is Krishna's body, unlike our body, which is rather rotten and temporary and full of ignorance. And eventually it will die. Um, Krishna's body is eternal. And we're part and parcel of Krishna. We're all sons of Krishna. So... Uh, in the spiritual world, in our original spiritual form, like I mentioned in the beginning of the podcast, that is also eternal. If you remember Krishna, you get that eternal body. Is it clear? I think so. So if you chant 16 rounds, you increase the chances. That is a transcendental gambling. We don't say, we say no, no materialistic gambling. You do transcendental gambling. Chant 16 rounds and increase your chances of winning the spiritual body at the end of your life. Very nice. So... <clears throat> Uh, let us continue through the quotes. We can't read all of them because otherwise we'd be here for a long time discussing, but let's just read a few principal ones. Okay, uh, let's read this third one. There are many regulative principles in the Shastras and directions given by the spiritual master. These regulative principles should act as servants of the basic principle. That is, one should always remember Krishna and never forget him. This is possible when one chants the Hare Krishna mantra. Therefore, one must strictly chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra 24 hours daily. One may have other duties to perform under the direction of the spiritual master, but he must first abide by the spiritual master's order to chant a certain number of rounds. In our Krishna consciousness movement, we have recommended that the neophyte chant at least 16 rounds. This chanting of 16 rounds is absolutely necessary if one wants to remember Krishna and not forget him. Of all the regulative principles, the spiritual master's order to chant at least 16 rounds is most essential. One may sell books or enlist life members or render some service, but these duties are not ordinary duties. These duties serve as an impetus for remembering Krishna. When one goes with a Sankirtana party or sells books, he naturally remembers that he is going to sell Krishna's books. In this way, he is remembering Krishna. When one goes to enlist a life member, he talks about Krishna and thereby remembers him. The conclusion is that one must act in such a way that he will always remember Krishna and one must refrain from doing things that will make him forget Krishna. These two principles form the basic background of Krishna consciousness. So let us just put a nice video of Srila Prabhupada chanting on while I talk. <clears throat> Very nice, we can see how Srila Prabhupada is chanting. Just keep in mind, before we get into this quote, Srila Prabhupada is a Mahabhagavat. He is a pure Nitya Siddha devotee. He's coming from the spiritual world. He's eternally perfect um, on the highest platform. He doesn't have to follow any regulative principles. He's in pure love of God. What regulation? He doesn't have to regulate. 
He has no desire for material enjoyment. But still, Srila Prabhupada is showing the example, chanting 16 rounds. So this is such an important thing. So let's watch Srila Prabhupada. So, um, <coughs> yes, now, um, regarding the um, quote, there are many regulative uh, uh, duties prescribed. Prabhupada says in that quote that you should chant 24 hours daily. And then he says in the next line that you should chant... Um, I'm sorry, that you, there, uh, um, there are many duties to be fulfilled uh, as per ordered by the spiritual master. So then he goes, so it might seem contradictory, right? How can I chant 24 hours on the beads, but also execute the duties of my spiritual master? Uh, but then Srila Prabhupada explains that if you go out on book distribution, or you're offering food, or you're doing some kind of service that is also remembering Krishna. All these devotional activities are on the absolute platform. There's no relativity, there's no uh, distinction as in the material world. Everything is for Krishna, so it is on the absolute platform. There's no difference. However, chanting 16 rounds, it's not that, oh, I can take prasadam all day, spiritual foodstuffs, and that counts as chanting my 16 rounds. That's not allowed. You can't chant 16 rounds. Instead of chanting 16 rounds, you eat 16 pakoras in the morning. No, that is not That is not how it works, just because it's on the absolute platform. Don't try to be over-intelligent. It's not, that's not how it works. So, <clears throat> uh, yes, um, 16 rounds must be there. Otherwise, all the other devotional activities, they become slackened. If your mind is not fixed on Krishna by the chanting of 16 rounds, then you, how will you remember Krishna when you do all these other activities? So it's okay. You can go and you can do other kinds of services. We also need some varieties of engagement. It's not that we can just sit down and be like Haridas Thakur, chanting 300,000 names of Krishna a day. The mind is not so much fixed. We need some variety. We need some engagement. We need to dovetail our energies we're coming from the, the background most of us of the material world working hard you know when i at least when i was a kid i was really crazy you know i was like jumping off the walls doing this doing that i was skiing and playing video games and and going with my friends and driving cars and just all kinds of stuff very lots of passion and 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 trying different things so um we have lots of energy and lots of conditioning from the materialistic way of life. So, Srila Prabhupada gave a very nice process with many different activities, varieties of activities and engagements, physical engagements, engagements for the mind, um, engagements for every single one of the senses. Like you can eat prasadam, you can cook prasadam, you can distribute books, talk to people on the streets, you can make clothes and flower garlands for the deity or picture of Lord Chaitanya, Srila Prabhupada. You can clean the temple. <clears throat> you can hear the Srimad Bhagavatam, chant your rounds, go on and, and go into Kirtan, play Harinam in the streets. So many varieties of activities and each one engage the sen engages the senses. So um, if you perform all these different activities, then the senses, they all become... Um, unified in Krishna consciousness. They don't become distracted, each one doing their own thing that they like. You know, the tongue is not saying, oh, take me to a nice restaurant. The eyes are not saying, let me go see that nice cinema film or let me see that nice girl or boy. Uh, the ears are not saying, let me hear that nice Justin Bieber song, as Puruji Prabhu says, Justin Bieber. <laughs> or that, that rapper we just saw, unfortunately saw a picture of Krishna. His name, I, I feel a little bad saying his name is Krishna, but anyway, don't go hear Krishna. <laughs> and that's the first time you'll hear me on this podcast saying don't hear about Krishna, because not that Krishna, the real Krishna. You should go hear from the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna. Not some bogus imposter Krishna rapper nonsense. So um, the senses are dictating in so many ways. But if you use those senses in Krishna consciousness, they become unified, and eventually the mind becomes very focused, very pacified. You can even you will actually eventually reach a state of mind called samadhi, which is uh, um, complete focus on one subject matter. 
And then when you, you know, when you reach that stage, then you can start chanting a bit more seriously. Then you can really start chanting. But until then, we have many different engagements. Uh, and like I said before, that doesn't mean that we neglect the 16 rounds. The 16 rounds are there. They give the fuel. They give the juice to these different activities. And these different activities, they purify the senses so that the, the juice, the 16 rounds, becomes more amplified and we purify more and more and more. So it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful, um, complete process that Srila Prabhupada um, gave us how to... Uh, how to chant these 16 rounds. So now I just want to show a quote because there are some examples. We're going to go back to this nice video of Srila Prabhupada, don't you worry. Um, there are some kind of, there was an example in Srila Prabhupada's Leela of devotees who were actually neglecting the 16 rounds um, in order to do other seva. Um, so let's have a look at that. This is a conversation between a couple of devotees and Srila Prabhupada. <clears throat> devotee says, such devotees that they do service, they may be very big, they attract so many people, they are successful, kirtana and everything, but we know that they are not chanting japa. What can we do in that situation? Prabhupada, situation, he is doing some service, he is doing some service. Devotee, yes, Prabhupada. So because on account of that service, if he could not, that can be excused. But not that practice should be taken as a permanent business. The regulation is that if you cannot finish your chanting that day, the next day you should forget sleeping and eating and must finish it. Devotee, some persons we encounter, they don't even chant at all, and yet we are in association with them, and they are Prabhupada. No, if you miss on account of busyness, the next day you must finish it. You should not go to sleep. You should not. Yes, that day you should forget all other business. First of all, compensate this. <clears throat> devotees. Some devotees have it as a chronic condition, though. Prabhupada. Then he is an animal. Devotee. But still, he is doing lots of good devotional service. Devotee too. He may even be a manager. Prabhupada. Then, then they will get some chance later on. What is that, devotee, if you do not follow the regulative principles? The business is, if, you, uh, if one day you cannot but finish, the next day you must finish. Now, for eating, he is very eager. And for sleeping, he is very eager. And for finishing chanting, he has no eagerness. Then he is an animal. It is simply an excuse. Yesterday you had no time, you were very busy. All right, today you forget your sleeping and eating. Finish it, that is wanted. And only for chanting you have no time. This is not allowed. This is not allowed. This is cheating, that I am so busy. Devotee. Most of these devotees in Hyderabad, they are chanting 25 rounds a day or more. Prabhupada, that's all right. If you can chant more... That is good. Okay, so let's just break it down because this is kind of this is another portion, another kind of topic there in the later part of the quote. So uh, <clears throat> now, um, uh, yes, there are sometimes devotees um, are performing lots of devotional service and they're so much engaged and busy with their service that they may not find time to chant their 16 rounds. Uh, but here Srila Prabhupada says, no, there is a process also for that. Okay, perhaps one day you were busy, so much busy that you couldn't get to it, but that's all right, you have the next day, right? So um, this eating and this sleeping are not so important thing, actually. Because, as I said before, we're not the body. Uh, the body um, depends on the soul. Not that the soul depends on the body. We have it the other way around. Generally, we're thinking, if I don't eat, if I don't sleep, uh, then I'm going to die. It's actually not the fact. The, the soul is what is maintaining the body. Um, the six Goswamis of Vrindavan, um, and also Srila Haridas Thakur, who I showed earlier, um, uh, they gave up sleeping entirely. Srila Prabhupada often quotes this shloka. Uh, shloka it's uh, from... Shad Goswami Ashtakam is a very nice devotional uh, song uh, written by um, Srinivas Acharya. So uh, uh, it's a Hara Nidra Nipano. There's a particular line that Prabhupada always quotes. They gave up eating and sleeping. They were so much engaged in devotional service. They forgot about eating and sleeping. We put so much important on these, uh, importance on these two things 
because we attach to the body because we want to enjoy the senses and and these two things are always pushing especially if you've ever tried try going with very little sleep for a few days try not sleeping at all for two days believe me your body will be screaming be screaming at you <laughs> at full blast to take rest actually it will basically command you to take rest it will try to shut down it's very difficult to resist even though we're not the body um, we're very much usually most of us are in, under the influence of the body so sleeping must be there and especially eating also must be there it's difficult for people to go um, even fasting for one day is very difficult for people even though um, you can actually fast for even 30 days at a time even longer than that actually there are examples on the Shuma Bhagavatam of great kings fasting for 40 plus days so it is entirely possible to go without food for very long periods of time. And the Goswamis, they were eating very little. Uh, for example, uh, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. Um, sorry? I said Raghunath? Ah, that we will see later in the audio. <laughs> Raghunatha um, was uh, taking a, a spoonful of buttermilk Right? Not even butter, not even cheese, not even paneer, butter milk he was taking every second day. So very little foodstuffs because he was so much absorbed in studying the scripture, writing. This is almost inconceivable to us because, of course, these things are maybe not so palatable to us. Maybe we have some little interest, but they're not so transcendentally ecstatic that we forget about our bodily necessities. But... Um, in certain, in uh, higher levels of Krishna consciousness, these activities, they become the life and soul of the devotee. And they cannot be given up. They're so transcendentally relishable. So, of course, this also should not be imitated. But it just goes to show that these things are not so important. The 16 rounds by which we get to those levels of consciousness, that is actually what's important. So, um, if you can't finish one day, you have work you have uh, some family engagement or something, you know, you had to take rest or so many things. Um, that's okay, but count how many rounds you didn't chant and chant to the next day. Make up for it. Uh, this, this leniency was given by Srila Prabhupada because he knew that in the Western countries and now across the whole world, the situation is not exactly that people can live in the jungle and just sit down and chant Hare Krishna. People have very busy lives and also, even those devotees who are engaged full-time in temple life, preaching work can be very uh, engaging. There are many things, many duties to be done. There are people to deal with and uh, um, many duties to have fulfilled, sometimes in a timely manner. So sometimes it's not always possible, but we should always make that adjustment because without chanting these 16 rounds, uh, eventually the consciousness will become... Um, degraded and we won't be able to remain in our service at all we're doing a service 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 uh, trying to stay always engaged but if we neglect the 16 rounds then we will have no taste for the service at all so um, this 16 rounds is the most important in fact there's actually a quote where Srila Prabhupada says simply chant these 16 rounds you can sleep the whole rest of the day but chant these 16 rounds that's the most important Basically, we exist for chanting these 16 rounds. That's the whole human form of life. There are so many different forms of life um, available within the material world. Uh, there's a nice picture here I will show you. <clears throat> um, yeah, look at this one. Oh, well, maybe this is not the one. Ah, yeah, actually, there's the one. Look at this, see? There's a very nice picture. Um, you, we, we can go, right, from alligator, peacock, sea lion, horse, so many things, demigods, semi-gods, all these different forms. Um, 8,400,000, according to the... Uh, I can't remember which Purana that is. Padma Purana? Some Purana that you can uh, get 8,400,000 species, 400,000 of which are a human form. 
And uh, even less than that, way less than that, are civilized human beings that have um, the opportunity to chant Hare Krishna. So, um, uh, in the human form of life, this chanting Hare Krishna, being the only way to get released from material bondage, um, it's such a rare opportunity. Why should we give it up for the same activities that we can get in any of the other, hum the other forms of life? whether they're animal or insect or whatever they might be, we can eat, we can sleep, we can mate, we can defend, we can distract ourselves with so many different engagements, but um, we can't chant Hare Krishna. So, better we utilize just two hours of our day to chant 16 rounds. It's not very difficult. And if we do it, uh, we can solve all the problems of this life. So don't get wrapped up in your duties. Don't get wrapped up in other engagements. Make time for chanting uh, your 16 rounds. Okay, so let's just read one more quote. Um, we have to, of course, be a little timely here. Oh, yeah, it's getting on time. Okay, let's just read one thing to... Um, uh, one thing to... Um, end it up. Okay, how to chant. That's a nice, that's a nice portion. All right. Prabhupada here says in a letter, I am glad to hear that you are always keeping engaged in Krishna's service and chanting Hare Krishna. As you chant, try to hear each word very carefully and always complete your 16 rounds. Regular and attentive chanting, along with following the four regulative principles, will keep one pure. Simply by following these principles and chanting Hare Krishna, one can make his life successful and perfect. Vishnu Jan, if you chant from the lips or if you just chant in the mind as you walk, Prabhupada, begin from the lips, then you go to the mind. <clears throat> and here's another one that's also very important. Considering your problem, I will advise you to chant on your lips since you become tired chanting out loud. Also, you can sit and hear your godbrothers chanting, and you can also hear tapes. Do all of these, and there should be no problem. Okay, well, that's actually not the one I wanted to... Um, read uh, just one more um, hmm. uh, okay well there's another one up here where Prabhupada says the chanting should be done very loudly okay the first regulative principle is that one must chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra loudly enough so that he can hear himself and one must vow to chant a fixed number of rounds sometimes we see that devotees um, chant very quietly they don't want to disturb others or they, uh, um, so many things. But uh, they often are mixing up the names, or not saying the whole mantra, or not saying it loudly enough that they can even hear. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. And you can't chant like that. You must sp not scream also, you know, you have to have, be, you have to use a little intelligence. Don't, don't bring the police to your house uh, and interrupt your 16 rounds in that way. But uh, chant in such a way that the mind can become focused on the Mahamantra. Otherwise, um, it's going to be thinking of so many nonsense things. Don't think of ladies. Don't think of boys. Don't think of the nice burfi that's in the fridge. Think of Krishna by focusing your name. Sorry, focusing your mind on the name. Don't focus your name on the mind. <laughs> that, that is not that kind of chanting is not preferred. Um, yes. So. Uh, <clears throat> um, Yes, the, the chanting should be regular. If you chant 16 rounds every day, that's also important. Um, it's not necessarily that you have to chant immediately 16 rounds, of course. Uh, you can also work your way up. Just try chanting one round in the beginning. It's not so long. It takes usually 10 minutes uh, in the very beginning. If it takes longer, that's also not a problem. Don't worry. If you want to focus, if you want to take it slow, take 15 minutes, 20 minutes, one hour but chant just one round, try it out, and build your way up. I also, I didn't exactly jump immediately onto 16 rounds. I just tried chanting one round in the beginning. I tried chanting one mantra in the beginning. So you can work your way up. And then eventually, as you do a regular practice, a fixed number of rounds, whatever it might be, every single day, you'll um, train the mind, you'll become more easy to chant, in the beginning, sometimes even the muscles, they don't want to cooperate um, in chanting this, this foreign, foreign words. Not just foreign language, but also foreign to our conditioned soul. We don't want to um, chant Krishna's name. But uh, in the beginning, 
If you chant regularly, it'll become easier and easier, and eventually you'll be able to get onto 16 rounds. And eventually, after 16 rounds, you chant for some time, you'll get to a stage where you think, oh, six, 16 rounds? Let me chant 16,000 rounds. Let me chant unlimitedly. It is so nice um, process. So, <clears throat> uh, yes, try, try to work your way up to 16 rounds. And if you get to 16 rounds, if you chant every single day regularly at the same time, um, it becomes like you can't even go without chanting 16 rounds. It, it become, you get attachment to the chanting. Um, it's like love. You don't have to tell a, 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 a girl uh, to love a young girl to love a young boy and a young boy to love a young girl. Eventually, you will just do it out of attachment. Now, this is obviously more of an elevated stage, but even in the preliminary stages, you will feel, I cannot go without chanting my 16 rounds in the morning. Um, your day will never be the, uh, it will not be the same. You will feel something is missing. I remember one time, I didn't have time to chant my 16 rounds in the morning. That was very unusual for me. I was living in my Kami uh, home, uh, my home with my parents back in the United States. And I didn't chant my 16 rounds and I had to go walk my dog with my dad. And it was the worst day ever. <laughs> it was, it was my, I felt so um, unpeaceful and unfocused um, in my mind. I was simply thinking of the dogs while I was in the dog park with my dad. I couldn't, I couldn't really focus on any, anything higher. So um, um, yeah, this 16 rounds uh, uh, if you, um, if you chant it regularly, you will find yourself attached that you can't give it up. And then it's very easy to, um, perform devotional activities and advance in your, um, Krishna consciousness. So, um, I hope this was a relatively easy to follow breakdown of, uh, what the mantra is, how to chant it nicely and the importance of chanting 16 rounds, um, for this video to really have a lot of relevance to you, first of all, you must do it. <laughs> that, is, that is the stress. I think that's the most important thing to keep in mind. That um, uh, First of all, do the chanting. And one other tip uh, I have to say is if you hear, if you hear um, the books of Srila Prabhupada, or the classes, or the morning walks, or the conversations, or the letters, whatever it might be, if you hear from Srila Prabhupada about the chanting, about Krishna, about the spiritual world, about the misery of material existence, your enthusiasm for chanting will increase because you'll realize, oh, there's actually a purpose behind my chanting. I'm not just chanting some mundane alphabets here. I'm not just uh, wasting my time because sometimes that thought can come. If you don't hear, it becomes like a, a, a chore. But if you hear, you understand, oh, I have a goal. I want to go to the spiritual world. It's wonderful in the spiritual world. The eternal spiritual body is a fantastic ideal. The material existence, that is very um, lamentable. I don't want to stay here with Phil's managing my YouTube videos, watching everything I do, and, and Bill Gates investigating my computer every time, and so many things, and indigestion, and... Horrible, horrible mysteries we get here. So, but anyway, I, I chant. Justin Biber's screaming, screaming in my ear. So, um, or who's that other guy? To, I don't want to, maybe I don't want to offend people who like him, but uh, Tony, Tony Robbins, he's screaming oh. in my ear. <laughs> so, so uh, rather than deal with these things, let me chant. Let me get out of this material world. Let me go back home, back to Godhead. Let me associate with Krishna. Right? Let me realize that this name is non-different from Krishna, the reservoir of all pleasure. Yes, Krishna is the reservoir of all pleasure. All you need is this chanting, actually. All you need in life, all you need for your very existence is to chant Hare Krishna. Just like Haridas Thakur, all he was doing was chanting Hare Krishna. That was his life and soul. He didn't need to eat, he didn't need to sleep. So this is possible as long as we follow this uh, process, um, uh, how do you say, uh, we follow all of the process that Srila Prabhupada gave us, but at least start somewhere, chant a little something, and eventually come to this uh, highest perfection. Um, read Srila Prabhupada's books, get infused, chant whatever you can, 
but if you want to be take it really seriously, Jan 16 rounds. So uh, anyway, you can join us on the next podcast. Um, I'm going to be doing the next one with another devotee. You can let me know. Maybe you have some suggestions for the topic idea, any ideas, any feedback for the podcast. And uh, I will see you next time. Please drop a like, subscribe, add this to your watch later. Or wait, hold on. You're already watching it now. Subscribe, add this to your favorites. Something, somehow or other, interact. And uh, yes, Hare Krishna. Jaya Shita Prabhupada. Haribol.